Okay. All right. So uh, that's a typical setup. Okay. So, um, so you got your felt piece. Okay. Now what I, I have, I mean, um, a rug, just like a regular room rug. And then I, um, I have, I use two pieces of felt only because this is uh, a little dirty right now. So, um, but you have your felt in here and then you have your paper stack up. Um, to speed up the process, I like to stack a good sheet of paper on top of, instead of you do one, you put it away, then you have to get another one. Instead, you just like peel them off and then just keep going. Um, so I kind of stack a piece of paper and then you have your paper weights, okay? To either put them on the top like this, um, or in, in the, each top corner, or you're gonna put them one here, one here, if we're gonna do the diagonal line. Then the, uh, the paint bucket for the ink, you have uh, ink here, something to, um, to hold the brush. Um, I mean, a piece of stone or something where you can just put the brush like they works. Uh, and this specific one, you can leave it like this sometimes, but for me, it's a little high and I feel like the brush is just gonna fall on the on the floor. So I just use a, a little brush holder to like put the brush, the rest to rest the brush in there. Um, I have my brush already moist in, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna like really soak in. So like when I lift up those bristles, you see it dripping, okay? So I'm just really gonna get a good soak, pressing gently so that all the, hairs are saturated. And then on the side, I'm gonna start gently uh, taking the excess out. And then as I do that, I'm also turning the brush a little bit to try to get it back to a point, okay? So I'm just kind of gently pressing it and then turning it so that it goes back to a point. And I test, see how it's still dripping, that's too much. So you can do this quicker, right? Just keep it a little press. And then that drop, it's, that, that drop took a little while to get, so that's getting close. And then test it again. So like I, ha I would have to do this to make a drop fell, and that's pretty good. So if I had to like push it down for the drop to fall, that's pretty good. Because then that way I can hold it like this, I can hold it like this, I can hold it like this, and it's not gonna drip on me. And it has plenty of ink to, to write. Um, so two things though that I would point out is that I, um, I like to think of practicing Shodo like Okyo. There is one time where you just need to read the book and, practice and, and learn the, the words. And then there's another time when you're actually trying to do the Okyo, right? So I would approach Shodo the same way. There are times when you just kind of want to just look at your exemplar and then just practice writing the exemplar. And then there are times where you're gonna to try to sit down and do shoto. So, cause just like Okio, we are, we, you wanna do the Okio, but the obstacle is like, I'm still trying to read and I'm getting lost and I'm worrying about the words and I still have to get the rhythm, right? And then once you have that, that sutra in, in your body, like you know the words, maybe not by memory, but you can follow them on the book fairly well. You don't have to worry so much about staying on track, then you can really do it, right? You feel that freedom. I'm like, I can really just go now because I, I have the words in my body. Same thing when, you, when you're looking at the example and the first time it's like, what is this? So study the exemplar first, right? And do it a bunch of times, just like, one and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again and then another session when you practice is when you want to do the shoulder with breath and everything just try to do it not really thinking about what way this goes and this is stroke number two right you already have a little bit of um uh acquainted you get acquainted with that exemplar enough that you can maybe not look at it so much right you just kind of like the Okio book, you, you need to read it, but you can just like, it's like fast read and you know the word before they come up on the paper. You just kind of keep in track. So the same thing in the show, like you take a look at it and you're like, okay, got it. And then you just do it. And then you maybe look at it 
to to keep tracks of it. Um, it's like uh, Green Roshi says, you got to encounter it, right? So it's like you face it and you encounter it. And you're like looking at it. It's like two people with two swords. You're like looking at it and then you're like, all right, I'm going to write it down. <laughs> now I'm going to write down the example, right? So um, that's like the the two words. Like one is like study and then the other one is doing it. So um, I don't know how much time you're going to have for Shodo, but like maybe if you can at first just study first like just do just study the example and get used to your brush get used to your 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 paper and your materials and then once you do the example a couple of times then you're like okay now i'm going to try to i'm going to try now that put my breath and do my form and then try to do the shoulder okay so if i were going to do something like that which is i don't know how i approach it um if um if you're gonna uh, be looking at um at our our tissues uh exemplars so it's three per per um per set so to speak so just do one at a time right just just do one character at a time and then try to do all three but if i was going to do one at a time i'm just going to have it right in front of me so that i can see it okay and then as and i'm sitting seiza okay with my no my knees far apart i got my my waist my waist on the top and i'm gonna get my my uh well i'm right-handed so i'm holding the brush with my right hand and then left hand i'm gonna put that left hand right in front of me to hold the paper and that does two things hold the paper and i also like to think of this hand as your ground like a like a outlet you got the two prongs and then there's the ground that keeps you grounded on the floor that's what this hand is okay this hand just keeps you grounded on the floor. So you're, you're, you can let your hara drop and then your body is just like connected to the earth with this hand. While this hand can stay nice and relaxed to be able to write. So I'm holding my paper. I'm keeping myself grounded. I'm looking at the example and I look and then I write the first stroke. And then I look and I write the second stroke. I look, third stroke. I look. And then I do the last stroke and then I finish. Then I look, I look and I figured out where, you know, what's, uh, what's going on, what doesn't translate it uh, from the paper here, you know, where is it a little bit, I make a mental note and then I just like pass the paper, right? And then do the next one. So you can, if you do this like this, it's stacking up, you can I, like really practice like a lot of versions. So I'm like, all right, I gotta be a little bit thicker. I look, I look, and I'm looking at my own at my own paper too. I'm not I'm not looking here, not looking at my hand. Okay? Look what I'm doing here, and then I take a look again. So I'm constantly checking. I'm like, okay, okay, and then just keep going, right? And then that's that's kind of like the study part, just endless repetition of doing that copy. And one thing that it will help you when you look at these things. It's not just to look at the black lines, but also look at the white spaces in between. That'll also give you a good hint of like how much space in between these two. What is the shape of this wiggly line? Well, what is the white space shape in between the two? So sometimes if you feel like locked in, I'm like, I don't know what's going on, then try to change your vision. And instead of looking at the black, look at the white and see what the white spaces are. Um, What's the difference? And like uh, a good example is from this one, right? It's like this white space here is the key to how to do that turn is to make sure you have that white space shape. And sometimes a lot of, a lot of times it looks like a circle and not, it's not a circle, right? So it's just like changing like a little bit of how you see it. Um, so that is sort of like sit down and then just copy the exemplar over and over again. Then when, we're, um, when you're ready to sort of kind of do it, now, uh, I like to f do the diagonal line as a warm-up, and that's usually how I would do it as a shin too. I, we do the line first as a warm-up. So you put the, the stones on, on um, each corner. So you're going to draw the line from left to right. And... Uh, is anybody left-handed? <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, so 
you're still going to write left to left to right. Okay. Um, because if you change the direction, then it's going to look like a mirror. Um, so the one thing that you will have to uh, sort of kind of realize is that a lot when, when, uh, when we do right-handed and I'll, I'll demonstrate left-handed is that you are pulling a line, right? So it's like, as I pull, the line forms. When you do a left-handed, you're pushing the line to form it, okay? So you're still gonna do it left to right, but you're gonna push the line instead of pulling the line, if that makes sense. Um, but even when you do the character, the exemplar, you're still writing left to right, okay? Um, so, So you want to make sure your brush is uh, inked before you start, right? And then check for ink, right? Make sure that I'm not dripping. I have enough ink that my my brush is uh, is pointy, uh, has a tip. Um, that's a good place to start. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a one time uh, talking and then I'll do it like no talking so you can, can see it. Um, so once you, once you begin, you grab, you grab the brush here and then this part of it here is it's not so much like I'm bowing to the brush but is you wanna kind of get that gravity of that brush on your hands and feel like the weight of it. And it's, it's almost like we, we, I hold it and then I try to lift it up so that I can feel the gravity of the brush. As, I, as I'm setting here, that hand stays there. I'm gonna get my hand on the ground. So I'm gonna ground it now. And then from here, I'm gonna take a deep breath. Like we do the hot up breathing through our mouth. Like, okay. And then as I do that, I'm gonna raise my arm up to open my rib cage. Okay. So you really wanna like open your rib cage up and nice and extend it here. So you like open up as you take a deep breath hand grounded here and then from right up here, that brush comes right down on that exhalation starts, okay? So as I come up here, brush comes right down to the left, okay? So lands here on the left. And as I start to exhale, nice and slow, you start to like slowly, 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 hand stain, stay, uh, brush stays perpendicular, same straight up, right? We don't wanna go like this. And then it's nice and slow and slow and slow and slow and slow and slow and slow, 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 slow until I'm out of breath, I'm out of breath, I'm out of breath, and I'm finished. Okay. And that's like your last, like your last breath is just right at the end. Okay. Now, um, the key here is to like stay nice and relax and breathe, uh, exhale that line out. If you find yourself like, you know, shaking, right, when you're doing like that, so it's you know, too much. So just relax into it and just exhale, 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 exhale. Keep it nice and straight, nice and straight, and then finish. And then the same thing, you go ahead, turn the page, and then do another one. And then keep, keep going. Then, um, so I'll do that. So once you do this, right, you do the line, do it a couple of times. At first, you feel like it's forceful and just keep working on it. And then you do the same with the, after you study the character, like I did my study, I was writing a little bit, then you do the same thing for, for each character. So you try to write them in one breath, 
in here. Well, I'm gonna have to put my stone on the top now for this. So go here. So as you can see, when I when I do it that way, I'm not really checking whether it's um it's similar to the to the example or not. You want to save that for when you're studying, like when you're not trying to do the shoulder. When you're doing the shoulder, you just you're just doing one, two, three, and then you're trying to really engage with the breath and the brush, and then you fold them up and then. I don't know, put them in the fireplace or just start killing or something, use it for, for starting fires or whatever. Because um, it's not, um, I don't think it's really something that you say, right? Especially on newspaper, that's not the point. But um, any questions so far? Four feet and about two feet and a half, maybe? Okay. Two and a half by four is this is this one, which is big enough. I don't you, this this bigger one. Oh, mm -hmm. and um, you want to put something under the paint, under the not the paint, the ink. Mm -hmm. I just have it on the felt, but um, you would want to put maybe a piece of a piece of paper under that uh, okay. ink too. Okay, so. thank you. I couldn't haven't bought them yet, so I want to make sure I. Yeah, so uh, this one I don't remember what this one came came came. I, somebody might have to give it to me because it's pretty thick felt. The mm -hmm. black one, I just bought it at, I think it was like Joanne's or something, and just bought a, a, you know, a big roll of it, and I just cut it myself. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I think that the um, when I do the 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 line. Right when yeah when you just do the line I I I try to be fairly audible when I do that and when I um uh, when I do the one character at a time like I just did here I just did one character from the three set and then I did the second character and I did the third character I'm still I'm still loud and then at the dojo I, I have our members do the same thing so that I can hear their breath. So that I, so I see what the length of their breath is and see if they're giving up a little too early. Because sometimes, you know, you want to keep pushing all the way onto the end. But when, when you, um, when you want to do the three characters together, like on a piece of paper, um, then not so much. And, and you don't have to do that on every single character. You sort of kind of do it at the beginning when you begin the piece, because then that is like one piece. So you, 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 you will like sit down and you have your ink and then you take your deep breath and you do that first character. And then from there on, you try to maintain that. It's not gonna be one breath, obviously, because you're doing three characters, but you maintain that thing. You don't have to do the, the, um, the big inhale from there on. And then whether you have to re-ink re or not, when you're doing more than one character, um, I found that that's kind of up. You have to have the sensitivity to figure it out whether if you need to or not. Sometimes you can get through two characters without inking. Uh, sometimes you feel like you need to ink every every character. It just that kind of depends on on like the brush, the paper, how much pressure did you put, and you know all that. So um, does that answer your question? Okay. Um, so I think. <laughs> Um, I think that uh, what I can do maybe is uh, if when if you know which ones you're gonna do, is everybody gonna do the same ones or do you, everybody gets to pick their own? 
All right, so just do just do the the um, uh, the poem in order, and yeah. then just start from the beginning. Okay, um, because unless I, you have I, a different recommendation, like are there ones that are better to start with? Well, there's certainly some set that are simpler. So, so this would be the first one, right? Okay. So, um, what I can do is um send um send a file with a pencil drawing of the direction of them and then the how and then what the strokes are because th then that way you will be able to see the direction of it um because it's cursive it's um it's going to be very little strokes it's just one continuous line that's going to go all kinds of directions so it's knowing what direction the line is is the thing that's going to be the most important uh, one thing too, as a general rule, is you're always going to write from top to bottom, left to right. So if you don't know where to start, it's, for example, if you look at this one over here, this one over here, right? We start top to bottom, left to right. So that dot will be the first place to start because it's top and then to the left. And then you continue going downwards, left to right. That's like, for the most part, that's like a good, um, uh, 99% of the time, but they are obviously the rules were meant to be broken. So there are going to be times where that's not the case, but for the most part, you can be like, all right, top to bottom, left to right. I can figure out where the brush is going to travel. Always left to right, top to bottom. And so, then also, also like horizontal before vertical, yes. right? like if you're yeah. gonna make a cross symbol you would start with the horizontal yeah yeah so yeah um horizontal before verticals and then crossing strokes are last so whatever crosses is always last um so um let's see maybe um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna switch myself so you can see me from from the back that way you can so like i mean it's like i'm gonna just be here so you can see my hand this way is that that a good angle this one, so this, um, this is technically three strokes, the first one, but the first two are very connected. So I go here, I go one will be that one, okay? That line. And then the brush from here is gonna go without, without lifting, right? Just the tip stays the tip of the brush stays on the paper. I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna come down for stroke number two, which is gonna be down here and then here and then to the, to the right and then around. So that's stroke number two. And then from here, okay, this, I'm gonna make these dots. This is, these dots are, the, in, uh, can you see that? Right, those dots are the invisible motion of the brush. That's where the brush is traveling, but it's not hitting the paper. Okay, so I go here, and it's gonna travel to to that dot right here. So the connection needs to stay, needs to be visible, well, needs to be uh, sensed, but not visible. Okay, so you, you your your motion has to go from here and then up and then do the dot. Okay, so that's one going in this direction. Okay, and then from here it goes, the brush goes up there and then it comes down to here and then keeps moving and then finish with the, with the dot. Okay, so that's the first one. Then, the second one, okay. So same, similar um, beginning, okay? Similar beginning where I go one is that line. And then again, the, the brush stays here and I'm gonna go without leaving, without completely lifting, go up, okay? And then I'm gonna come down to stroke number two which is goes this way and then it goes down and then back up 
back down, around, and then this lifts and it goes back here for the line heat, for the going down and then cross. Okay. So I'll do it one more time. This one, this one is um, it's a little bit tricky. So. Okay. So one, right? And then two here, down, up, follow that line back up again, and then down, follow that line back up again and around and get that section, okay? And then from here, goes back to the top, line straight down, and then to the left and across. So that would be one, this is two and three. So this one will have three strokes, okay? Then the last one. Now, a um, couple of things to, um, uh, to, uh, to like interpret uh, this, this uh, writing is a lot of the times when there's a difference of thickness, right? And there's a difference of uh, ink, uh, I don't know, blackness, right? Like this is, this is like very, very sharp. There's, you can feel like there's a lot of ink. And this one, it looks a lot thinner and a little bit lighter, okay? In this type of calligraphy, this um, uh, sort of dryness of the brush a lot of times indicates speed, okay? So this moving up here, that's a fairly fast move, okay? While this is a slow, it's a slow descent, right? So you wanna kind of nice and slow with a lot of ink. The other one is like whoop, up quick, okay? Now, um, we, don't, we don't know exactly for sure, um, because this is the beginning of the work, we can only guess that um, he inked and continue without, uh, without re-inking. And then by this time, the brush had dried a little bit. And then as he speed up, you can get some of that dryness. Uh, he might have continued to the second set without inking or not, but then there, you, you, there's some characters where you can tell that that's a fresh ink brush because there's some blobs, there's some boldness to it. And some of them are a little lighter. But for, for this type of stroke in this specific case, that's sort of the things that we can interpret as, maybe I had to go a little bit faster on this stroke here, okay? Or in this movement. Um, so for this one, uh, this is, well, that's, this is gonna be two strokes only. So the other second part is gonna be done in one stroke. So I'm gonna break it down into a couple of steps, but, one is that first dot that you're going to do on the left. And again, that's just a touch with the tip. And then the, the second stroke, but will be the first movement is the left side. So it goes from here and then around. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to get ready to go up, up. Okay. So that's like the first um, movement. Once I'm up here, okay, the, without lifting the brush, I'm gonna change direction and I'm gonna come down and then do the second part here, okay? And then from here, then I'm gonna do the last, which is coming around and then finishing up that way. Okay, so in one, in one movement, it will look like this. Let's see. I'm gonna step a little bit too. I'm gonna try to make sure you can see. So dot, right? And then So here and then up, 
here, and then the last part goes around. So again, for this, a couple of things you want to is the white space here, right? That like half moon shape, so to speak, that lot, the white space here, and then this white space here, okay? It sort of will give you a good idea on like how big that, how big that line goes around here, how far to, to the left I have to go and so on and so forth. So any questions on these three? No, the second, the second one is, uh, it's going to be the, uh, uh, the tricky one. If, if, if you, uh, need to like not do it on the floor, like you can do it on the table. And we, we've done that too during session on the study part where like, we just sort of kind of do it on the table. Just make sure you stand. And that the table is like at your abdomen level. And then you can just stand on top of the table and do the same thing, put your hand down and then just like um, study the character, the exemplar. And then when you're ready to try to do it with Hara, then you know, try to do it on the floor um, to get the full experience. But you can also do it standing up. What about also like a low table sitting in like Zazen position, like 14 inches off the ground? That's what I'm sitting Yeah. At. Yeah, you can do that. It's just like, it's hard to find a table that low. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I don't Yeah, but you can, I mean, like maybe a, maybe a coffee table, right? If you have a coffee yeah. table that's like it, low. And <laughs> Amazon, it's like a Japanese folding desk that I got on Amazon. Oh I yeah? Used to work at, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can definitely do, do that. But like the key is that the table is like at your abdomen level. So yeah. that it's like the right height. Definitely. But um, I mean, I would still recommend to do the floor every once in a while. Like, like I was saying, like you do Okio, right? You, when you're ready to sit down on the cushion and do Okio and then have the, the, the instruments to guide you, that's how you're trying to perform. Then you want to do it on the floor and, and get the full experience. But if, um, if you want to just kind of study the exemplars for a few days, then yeah, the table is fine. It'll work, it'll work nice. On the floor like this? No, no, no. But if I um if I'm on that low table, um I do I I sit both in Sesa and I also sit in cross legged. It, so if because if I'm gonna sit for long periods of time in a low table, I'll probably sit cross legged. Um, but uh, but when I'm doing this here, no. And um sometimes, especially when you're doing longer pieces, you kind of gonna like lift a little bit anyways and and then you have to like walk back to when you're doing the three characters so um when you're doing one you're, you're stationary but if you're gonna do the rice paper and then do all three characters which i recommend you do too like get the experience of trying to do all three at once and then get that full oneness of like this is one piece i'm gonna do in one shot and um then you have to like yeah you, you have to kind of crawl backwards as you do it. So uh, a cushion, I don't, I don't know where it would fit. I'm glad it was helpful.